Good morning. Today I just wanted to talk about uh, conditions of prevailing prayer. Sometimes people want to know, uh, of course, the question is, how do I get God to answer my prayers? Of course, the thing is, we want to know that we are, we are in him, we're walking in him. Uh, George Mueller of Bristol, he was a saint from the 19th century. He lived from 1805 to 1898. He is best known for his work with the orphans. He built uh, an orphanage that could house 2,000 orf orphans. And all of this came entirely by faith. He trusted in God. He and his workers, uh, they did not do fundraising. They did not broadcast their need. They went to God in prayer, and he would supply the need for them in all things. He never went into debt. And so you see, this is a, a good example to follow. And from his autobiography, he has a list of uh, what he calls conditions of prevailing prayer. And they are very informative, supported by scripture. Please remember that scriptures will be uh, listed, more scriptures will be listed in the description below. I will mention one scripture with each of these five conditions. I pray that God would quicken this to you. And just, uh, uh, they've been very, very helpful to me, but especially because they are scripturally based. Many times the things we're being told uh, do not come from scripture. Uh, and so please, I pray that the Lord would bless it to you. The first condition that he has for prevailing prayer, entire dependence on the merit and mediation of Jesus Christ, the only ground on which to claim blessing. We need to understand that when we are saved by grace, we are not saved by our works. And so that everything we have comes of the grace of God through Jesus Christ. We don't go to God trying to show him how, how good we are or all the things that we've done. No, we only come to him because we wear the name of his son, and that's why he recognizes it, recognizes us. We become children through adoption. And so it's on the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ alone. For this I have uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. And this is regarding Jesus. It says, For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So that is how the Lord looks at us. Looks at us. Number two, separation from all known sin. If we regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. It would be approving sin. Uh, the scripture for this that George Mueller used was Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now, I only want to mention when it says, when I regard iniquity in my heart, that is not being tempted because temptation by itself is not a sin. It's when we yield to temptation. But if I regard iniquity in my heart, regard also means kind of having an esteem for something that is a bad practice. Uh, for example, again, yeah, we met someone who has regard for lies. They claim the name of Christ but they are regarding lies as something good and okay. And so depending on the nature of this, this shortfall, the Lord would not hear the prayers because he wants this sin removed. So it's always good to ask the Lord to search your hearts and try your, try your life to see, is there any wicked way in you? Is there anything standing in the way? All right. Number three, faith in God's word as his oath. Not to believe him is to make him a perjurer and a liar. Wow, isn't that strong? We have to believe God's word, but we have to believe it in faith. And so for this, I have chosen uh, Hebrews 11, chapter, uh, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So let us stand on God's word as his oath to us. Again, we stand in the merit of Jesus Christ. 
And then I always think about this. God gave us his word. He gave us his written word and promises. He did that of his own character. He didn't do that because of who we are. And so we can rely on him uh, to carry out his word. But of course, these conditions of prevailing prayer are meant to be for Christians. We have already been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. We have repented of our sins and we've received forgiveness of, of sins through Jesus who bore God's wrath for us. Uh, if other people are trying this, they just click on it and say, oh, how can I get something? Uh, God wants something else uh, first. He may hear the cry of desperation for those who are still in unbelief. I have seen this and I know this, but these conditions of prevailing prayer are for Christians who are typically in prayer and seeking God to make a difference in their lives. Perhaps more importantly, they are seeking to make a difference for the Lord in the world. Number four, asking in God's will. Our motives must be godly. We must not seek a gift from God to consume it upon our lusts. This I find to be very, very, very important. As a matter of fact, George Mueller himself said, yielding to God's will and finding out what God's will is, he thought was about 90% of the difficulty. Uh, because once we know what the Lord's will is, we can pray according to his will. And then the Lord will answer that prayer. This from 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the pet petition that we have desired of him. And so it's very important to, uh, to walk in God's will. Um, one of the things that can be added here is God will answer it in his way and in his time. May, this leads us to the fifth condition of prevailing prayer. But it's very important to know because many times we have it in our minds how God is going to answer, what he is going to do. Uh, but if we are yielded to him, we are in his will, we can have confidence that he has heard. And we can thank him and should thank him even in advance for answering the prayer. Okay, number five, persistence in asking. There must be waiting on God and for him, as the husbandman has patience to wait for the harvest. And I have chosen this from James chapter five. I think it's verse 11. I think I'm going to read 10 and 11 here. Take, my brethren, the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering. Uh, I'm sorry, for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. This is one of the keys also that George Mueller focused on a lot in his in his life, and that is the need to wait on God. And this is not because God can't do things quickly, but obviously in the world, a, a lack of faith is just trying to answer things for ourselves with whatever opportunity presents itself to us, rather than doing things God's way and waiting on him. And so that is why it's so important to wait on him. But I can tell you honestly uh, that if you need something sooner, uh, the Lord will do that. Uh, one time I remember the Lord had been chastening me. He was trying to show me something. Uh, when I got up one morning, and I typically have had problems with my left foot, my left leg, I got up one morning, and even though typically my, my foot would be a little stiff in the morning until the, the ligaments, the tendons, whatever, got loosened up. This morning, I couldn't walk on my left foot. I was, I was literally like hopping around in the home, leaning on furniture and things. And the Lord had something to show me, and he has done this at times. And uh, so I sought him for this, and he showed me graciously. I laid it all before him, 
committed, committed my walk to doing things his way. And I said, Lord, you know, I said, I really appreciate you showing me this, but I kind of need my foot. I need to be able to walk. So please, if this is true, what you have shown me, please just heal my foot now. And it was just the most amazing thing. I could feel the ligaments and or whatever it is in your foot. Somebody probably knows. I could feel them moving and popping and just getting back into place. And so then I readily got up and could walk around the home as normal. So the Lord may have something to show us. He wants us to wait for him. Remember that he is faithful and that he hears you. Don't doubt that. But uh, love him enough to trust him and to do things his way. May God bless.